I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed today and so excited to be bringing God's truth to you. Hey, I know it's going to be a wonderful week. Now, this is, well, this is the last week for the month of July. Now, after this week, we just have a few, like one or two days to the month of July ends. And hear me, God's plan for you this year is coming to pass. So fear not, I'll tell you this truth. What else can you have confidence in but God? And if you have confidence in God, you better demonstrate that confidence. And you don't have confidence in God and say, let me see if it will come to pass. That's not confidence. That's trial and error. Now, that's what a lot of people do and they think they have faith. Oh, but I believe. Why didn't it work? No, sir. If you have confidence, you will display your confidence. Praise God. Now, we are still talking about being a witness and i assure you this week is going to be explosive praise god and as you listen to these words just prepare your hearts and 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 just receive his spirit to function allow his spirit to function freely in you in the name of the lord jesus christ before we go into the broadcast can we make demand for our daily bread if you've not been joining us to do this Please do it today. Don't say it in your mind. Open your mouth. Make that demand. And do it releasing your faith. How do you release your faith? I've told you before. Believe that these things that you say will come to pass. That's all it takes to release your faith. Praise God. So are you ready? Join me in faith and in agreement right now. And say, Father, I demand now for my daily bread. It is coming to me right now. I receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, you are so wonderful. You are the beauty of heaven. You are the beauty of this world. Freely have your way through this broadcast. Let everyone have an experience with you. That's what I ask for. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now, our team scripture for this series is Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. And I don't want you to lose sight of that. Everything I've been teaching has been centered around this. Jesus speaking to the disciples, verse 8, he says, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Jesus speaking, he said, you shall receive power. Now take notes. This thing he calls power. We've not experienced, you see, we've not understood the, the dimension of this power yet. So, hear me. The Holy Spirit is the power of God. And Jesus said, when we receive him, we are going to receive power. And that power is to make us witnesses to him. Now, what does that mean? It means we are, it's not just we testifying. No, it's people will testify about us. You remember the disciples. They, they saw the things they began to do. And then they said, how come these guys are, these guys never went to school. How come? And I said, they were with Jesus. Oh, see, now people testified of them. You remember the Bible said the disciples were first called Christians in Antioch. Why? Because they saw their actions. They saw their way of living. They saw the things they did and they remembered Jesus Christ. So they say, oh, these guys are the guys that followed that Christ, right? So they are Christians. You see, that's how the name came about. So they were bearing witness of Jesus. Now then, what is your life witnessing? Truly, what is your life witnessing? Have you thought about that? I'm talking to you right now. What is your life witnessing? I'm not talking about what you're preaching. I'm not talking about preaching now. 
What is the testimony of your life? What are you bearing witness to? The circumstances, the things that happen around you, the things that happen in your life, does it produce witness of Jesus or does it mock Jesus? Let me tell you this truth. And it's funny when I say things like this, it hits the nail. Anything that is not flowing according to Jesus Christ is of the Antichrist. So when we talk about Antichrist, people are waiting for one man to show up. Hey, anything that doesn't flow with the or confirm what Christ stands for is actually anti-Christ. Now, we are to be a witness of him. What does that mean? It means our life. You remember we've been talking about it in John chapter 15. It says, you have not chosen me. I chose you. I ordained you so that you will bear fruit and that your fruit will remain. We've talked about Jesus talking about the fruit we bear. Now, that fruit is what the power of the Holy Spirit produces. It is not something we struggle to do. No, sir. You see, when you recognize that, 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 that there's something working in you, that, that I say something because I'm referring to the power of the Holy Spirit. When you recognize that that power is working in you, and then you yield to that power, that power in itself works out in your life so much that the expression of your life will witness Jesus. If this is not taking place in your life, I'm sorry to tell you, you may be a pastor, you, you may be whatever. You are not serving the purpose of Christ. Most likely you're an antichrist. I remember the Lord said this to me one time, you know. You know, sometimes, you see, <laughs> Jesus left us with the Holy Spirit. He didn't leave us with any other thing but with the Holy Spirit. And so if your life is not being upgraded or updated by the Holy Spirit, if the Holy Spirit is not your teacher, if, if all you hear, all you know is what men have taught you, you're in trouble, I'm sorry to say, you're in, you're in big trouble. It, it means your life is really not serving God's purpose yet. No matter how committed you are in church, I'm sorry to say this. No matter how you carry church on your head, if the Holy Spirit is not your teacher, you're in big trouble. You, when I say you're in big trouble, let me tell you the extent of the trouble you're in. You risk being one of those that Jesus will say, I'm sorry, I never knew you. That's the truth. It's not about how, how, um, how we want to do what we want to do. It's more of how we yield to what the Lord is doing in us. We yield to what the Lord is doing in us. That is what the power produces. And that's one thing I needed to understand today, praise God. The power of the Holy Spirit is producing in us. I call Neshali Kamaya. Listen, there is one Holy Spirit. There is no different Holy Spirit. Only one Holy Spirit. And what that means is this. If he's in me and he's in you, he's supposed to produce the same results. So stop all this thought of uh, is not, that's not how we do it in our church or that's not how we do it in our, in, our own, in our own sphere. No, sir. There is no different Holy Spirit. It is one Holy Spirit. If it's a mango, it will produce mango fruit. Are you understanding what I'm telling you? You can't see a different fruit and say, eh, it's, it's the Holy Spirit. It's just that, you know, he, this one, he, he's just a different kind of. No, there is no different kind of Christianity. Christianity is, is submitting your life to the workings of the Spirit of God in you. And that Spirit will begin to produce fruit in you. And because it's the same spirit. Now that's why Paul in Ephesians told us 
Ephesians chapter 4, told us that we will all come to the unity of the faith. How is that going to happen? When we all begin to really, the reason we are not walking in the unity of the faith is because we are not fully submitted to the Holy Spirit. And, 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 and I'm going to be hitting some real nails this week. Praise God. I'm telling you the truth. So understand, it is one Holy Spirit. So it's either I'm submitted to him and you are not, or you are submitted to him and I'm not. And how do we know? By the fruits that we produce. See? The fruit he produces. Now, whatever you think, whatever you do, there is only one fruit that the Holy Spirit produces through our lives. And what fruit is that? Love. See that? Love. It's nothing else. It's not gift of healing. It's not, no, 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 no. It's love. The power of the Holy Spirit in us produces love. And when I say love, I've told you this last week. One, we come to the place where we accept freely the love of God in us. So one, the Holy Spirit produces in us the awareness of God's love. So if you're constantly in doubt if the Holy Spirit, if, if God loves you or not, if you're constantly in doubt, then it means you are not submitted to the Holy Spirit. It's as simple as that. No man can convince you of God's love. He tells us the love of God is shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Spirit. So nobody can convince you. Nobody can, no church can convince you. You know, I like that church. Oh, there's so much love in that church. Ah, oh, the first day I attended that church, they welcomed me well. They gave me money. They gave me food stuff. Ah, they even visited me 10 times. That church, because of that church, I know that God is love, truly. You will soon get offended. Let me warn you, praise God. Yes. That's not where, now, now understand this. If those people are submitted to God, they will demonstrate love. But you see, their demonstration of love is truly not sufficient for you to conclude that you are loved. I come Shali Kabaya. That conclusion only comes when love himself is at work in you. So now you get to that point where people offend you in church. It does nothing to you. Why? Because you've gone beyond their actions. You've received the love of God. So when you see people say, I I'm not going to church again. Why are you not going to church again? Hmm. Oh, the things I experienced in church. There are things that I, I even thought the greatest unbelievers would do to me. They did it to me in church. So that's why you don't go to church anymore? Yeah. I mean, why? Why? All these Christians, they are all fake. Okay. Thank you, sir. <laughs> You two are fake. <laughs> yes, you are fake. Because it means you did not receive the truth. And no man can tell you that truth. If you come to God, say, I've given my life to Jesus Christ. Really, did you give it to him? Did you receive him? If you received him, he is going to be walking love inside of you. So even if someone comes to tell you God hates you, you say, Really? No, I don't think so. Why? Because I, I am sensing the love of God in my heart so strong. I know it. I, I just know it. Praise God. So, oh, I was expecting a miracle to happen. The miracle did not happen. So, look, I'm not doing it again. I'm not doing it again. This thing is, this thing is just, it doesn't work. Uh-uh, uh-uh. You don't know the love of God. You haven't known it yet. You haven't known it yet. So I said, first, the Holy Spirit is, is working in us to produce that awareness of God's love in us. Then when we fully become aware, then we begin to bear the fruit of his love. So now miracles will begin to happen in your life to show that God loves you. And now people will begin to notice that about you, that you are loved by God. It begins from within you. Then people will begin to experience it around you. Then you now, with that confidence, will begin to show that love to everyone that you meet. Praise God. So the Bible says, love your neighbor 
as you love yourself. See, why people are not loving their neighbors effectively is because they have not come to that place of self-love. I talked and spoke to you about that last week. So they, they act in selfishness and they call it self-love. Praise God. Self-love is believing that God loves you. And because he loves you, nobody can hurt you. You see, now because you know nobody can hurt you, you can love freely. He said, I don't want somebody to break my heart. How can they break your heart? When is the love of God that you are giving? They break your heart or you feel your heart was broken because you were loving them selfishly. You understand what I say? You were loving them selfishly. But when you love, and that's the only love that exists. <laughs> it's God. Yeah. There is no, you know those things they taught us in, in school. There is a... Um, Agape love, filial love. They are all lies. I found that they lied to us, praise God. Yes, they did. I learned this from the Spirit of God. I hold the book separate. This thing, if the Holy Spirit is not your teacher, you're in trouble. You know, he was talking to me. He was talking to me about love one time. And I said, yeah, but, but then I remember that was when I was preparing to get married. Yeah, I learned this when I was prepared to get married. And, and it's amazing how the Lord taught me this. Now, I was preparing to get married, so I, I was praying and, and talking to the Lord about a lot of things. So I was talking to the Lord about, Lord, I see this thing they call love, I need you to help me. Because how do you love a woman for the rest of your life? I'm telling you what I was talking to the Lord about. And then the Lord spoke to me. See, he knows you. So when he answers you, he's not going to answer you just because of the question you asked him. He's going to answer you according to you. So the Lord said something. I have never heard anybody say that. <laughs> he said this to me. He said, son. Now, don't think you are going to love only your wife for the rest of your life. I say, how? how? He said, because there is only one love. And it's the same love that you're going to have for everybody. Uh -huh. No, 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 no. There is filial love. There is, the Lord says, no, I didn't teach that. He told me, he said, I didn't teach that. So where did we get it from? Now I was eager. I was like, okay, Lord, teach me. What is love? He said, it is me. Yeah, I know it's you. When we're talking about loving your wife, you know now. He said, son, there is only one love. And you are going to love everyone the same way. Then he said, the discipline, I call it shit. But you see, as I'm saying it now, the whole thing is just coming back to me. The discipline of expression is now on you. What does that mean? Love is inside you. Now you are the one that expresses love to your wife in this manner. You express love to your children in this manner. You express love to the Lord and his world work in this manner. You express love to your friends and everyone around you in this manner. But love is the same. Ayana <laughs> Kasaya. Wow. I've never heard this before. So when when you sit down and you know it happens, you just met met someone. You're a man, you know, you you meet a lady and, and there's just a kick in your heart, like, hey, this person, I don't know why I feel like this towards this person. It's love. And it's normal. Praise God. But then you take control of the discipline or the, the, the demonstration of love towards that person. So you don't say, oh, because I feel this, it, it must be. You know, some people begin to deceive. They say, maybe this is the woman I should have married. Because the way I feel towards her, it's normal, brother. It's normal. Praise God. It's normal. 
It's the love of God that you're feeling. Now you take responsibility to express it properly. My time is up. Praise God. I hope you are blessed today. I pray that truly the love of God will be made manifest in you. You will see the power of his love walking in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow.